Hey, what's up garden friends? How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Finally getting around to doing a video on the burrow's tail. Someone had asked me a little while ago if I would talk about these guys and I just, I hadn't gotten around to it yet. I forgot. That's attractive. Let's get that out of the shot. So here we are. I was looking at mine and I decided it's finally time to give this plant a good watering and I thought I'd go ahead and just like talk about it while I give it a little bit of a drink. Doesn't that sound exciting? Watering plants and just kind of staring at them. For starters, burrow's tail, donkey's tail, there are different varieties. Other than burrow's tail, the actual name for this plant is actually Ceta morganianum. It's hardy zones nine and up, I believe. They like bright, mostly indirect light, Cooler temperatures, they can take some heat, but I'll get into that a little bit more later. Very, 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 very low water needs. As I mentioned, there are different varieties. I don't know which one I have here, but the foliage can vary a lot. It's mostly just the shape. Sometimes they'll have more rounded sort of leaflets on here versus more long and pointy ones. And then there can be variations within the color of the foliage as well. Not a lot though, it's typically green or more of this glaucous grayish blue sort of color. And a lot of that color differentiation or variation, I should say, is really just about that nice chalky waxy powder that's on there. That powder being known as the epicuticular wax. Kind of helps protect the plants a little bit, sort of like a natural sunblock, holds in some moisture, keeps them from drying out too quickly. And once that powdery coating comes off, it doesn't come back. So I do try to avoid actually touching mine with my hands. I usually use something like a pen or whatever I need to to get in there. If there's dust or anything like that, then I'll use a brush to get that out. I avoid my hands because the oils will rub that powdery coating off, which isn't necessarily going to hurt the plant. It's just aesthetically, I like for things to be a little bit more even. And mentioned this plant either being easy or a little bit more difficult to grow. And that's because one, it's delicate. Two, it does not like to be watered very often. Well, I guess that those are the main things. It's pretty much just those two things. So if you are a heavy handed waterer, this might be a little bit more of a tricky plant for you because really I only water mine during the winter months, like maybe three times since November, but I have it set in a place that doesn't get a ton of light. So it's kind of has just been like chilling basically throughout the winter time. And I've slowly, now that it's, you know, getting close to mid-April now, I guess it is mid-April, I've been moving it into more and more light and I'm now starting to increase the watering, but not very much. In the house under normal conditions, I would probably only water this like once a month. If you have a very, very warm room, then you might need to water it more often than that. By warm, I mean like over 78 into the 80s. But average household temperatures, it just doesn't need to be watered very often because they rot so incredibly easily. If you overwater these guys, they are not forgiving at all. Like not one bit, they are so fussy. So I am gonna go ahead and give mine a drink. This will be the heaviest drink I've given this one in months. I wouldn't normally even do a soaking on it, but you can see that mine is desiccated. Can find some foliage here and show that to you. Maybe, here we go, I'm looking for it. Can I find it on camera? You can kind of see some of the desiccation in here. The leaves are a little bit more clamped. They're not full, basically. They have some shrivel to them, and that's why I'm giving it a more heavy watering than I typically would. I also thought it would be kind of fun to do that watering on camera because I have a feeling that that water is going to get soaked up very quickly. And I wouldn't normally do a soaking. I just want to like really, really, really reiterate that and bring it in. This is not a plant I would normally put into a drainage dish and just let it sit in water. And I'm only going to allow this to sit in there for a couple of minutes, whereas my other plants, maybe 15 or 20 minutes. Nope, not her. This plant, like I said, it will rot and there's no turning back once that happens. I mean, there are things you can do, but it's just like, ideally, you don't want, you just don't want a rotting plant. Okay, that's enough. Once it stops pulling up water really quickly, I can feel the weight inside the pot. It's good, it doesn't need any more. Like I said, not typically what I would do, but mine was like, beyond normal as far as being dry. It was like desiccated. And that's never great with a plant. So uh, that will do for now. When I water, I do try to avoid getting too much water on the foliage inside all of these points that are in here. You can kind of see where some water got in there. It's got some shadows, sorry about that. If it's really heavy and when you have these inside, there's typically gonna be less airflow. I'm out here in a grow space where the air is circulating pretty well. But indoors, you could take a paper towel or something like that, or a Q-tip, some type of cotton swab, and sort of dab up those water beads that are in there just to avoid the water settling and rotting the plant. Or even better, just try really hard. Use something with a narrow spout so you can get the water more close in here. 
in these gaps so that you don't have to worry about the foliage getting really, really wet. Like I mentioned, they rot very easily. I think that's going to be like an ongoing trend throughout this video. It's gonna be me talking about just like how to keep it from rotting. Just don't let it rot. Do not water this plant very much. So that being said, I only repot these when I know that it's absolutely necessary because they're fragile. They fall apart very easily. These little leaflets pop off of these guys like from the slightest little breeze it seems like and you can see in here they leave behind these teeny tiny little bitty brown scabs when the leaves fall off it's just not that attractive to look at the good news is though they're very easy to propagate when those little leaflets pop off you can take them and just drop them off into something shallow something that has like a very slightly pre-moistened soil in it typically better to use a cactus mix you can just set them in there you just put them in something shallow you don't really need to water it as long as that mix that's in there is slightly moistened it shouldn't be sopping wet and then just basically leave it alone eventually they'll root out and start to grow and once they start to like you see new growth on them give it a little bit of time increase watering and bump them into like an actual potting mix a potting mix made for cactus and succulents and not only a potting soil made for cactus and succulents but i usually would recommend with this plant specifically to amend that mix go ahead and add in some perlite some sand uh chunks of bark charcoal really anything that's going to help keep the soil a little bit lighter a little bit more airy and to let the water move right through it you want very sharp drainage sharp drainage meaning like you saw when i watered this once that water hits the soil surface you want it going right through there the drainage of the mix that this one is in is actually a little bit too intense which is why i soaked it because when i have watered it in the past like over these past few months it just goes right through the pot it doesn't really do much for the plants so that's why i wanted to give it a little bit of a soaking this time just because it's like a bit much and since it's on a hanger which is great with these donkey tails do great or i'm sorry burrows tails whatever you want to call them they do well on a hanger and a hanging basket because of the way they cascade out and they'll cascade a couple of feet typically and look absolutely beautiful Mine doesn't look that great because I haven't been touching it. I don't mess with mine during the winter time. Like I've watered it, given it just a very light drink probably every six weeks. But now that it's time to move on into the active growing season, typically I would say mid spring through, uh, oh, probably like September where I live. I'm in zone 6B, like smack dab, the middle of the USA in St. Louis. That's when this is going to be doing most of its growing. It's also when I'll be fertilizing, but not much not much at all again we get some precipitation here i'll move mine outside someplace sheltered so the rain's not constantly falling on it and with these i do like to use a tomato fertilizer i talk about that with a lot of my succulents i do usually do do it about a half strength i dilute it just according to the directions just at half the ratio they suggest i like the tomato fertilizers because they have a lot of calcium in them and that calcium does help make the plants a little bit more sturdy i've noticed and cactus and succulents just they seem to appreciate it when i have mine outside with those warmer temperatures I will probably be like watering it maybe every two weeks instead of once a month and every other one of those waterings I'll use just a little bit of fertilizer again not much they are a low fuss plant if you fuss with them too much you kill them that's why I said they can be kind of tricky they're just one of those plants where for me when I do a lot with them I get like really excited and I want to like split them up and put them into different arrangements and planters they don't usually appreciate it like never they never seem to appreciate it they don't like to be messed with just kind of leave them alone outdoors i'll have it in a spot where it gets indirect sunlight some dappled light in the morning filtered shady light throughout the rest of the day i don't really think i'm going to want this getting any direct sun at all during the summer months when temperatures are cooler particularly nighttime temperatures start to drop below 70 then i'm not gonna be as worried about how much light it's getting indoors though much easier just put it someplace where it's not not going to get blasted by sun where there's not gonna be any really intense drafts or breezes blowing onto the plant causing the problems drying it out too quickly and whatnot so if you have a room that's brightly lit for about i'd say four to six hours a day that would probably be the sweet spot for this guy and if it's just very bright filtered light like if you have sheer curtains or something like that it could be bright in there all day long it would be totally fine with that also just no direct burning blazing sun at least not for more than maybe like an hour or so in the morning time oh and i should have said this when i was talking about that potting mix and repotting these are a plant i know sometimes people can get away with putting things in pots that don't have drainage holes in them that's something i would never recommend with this particular plant because as i've mentioned 
any water retention for too long and they just throw an absolute fit. They totally freak out. The foliage starts to yellow. It'll start to fall off and then you can potentially have issues with rot and the plant just dying on you. So it's just easier to just have it in something with drainage holes. They only need to be watered monthly in the house. So with something like that, having drainage holes isn't that big of a deal. You can just very carefully transport the plant to the sink and let that water run over it until you see it come out the bottom and then like immediately stop. And if from doing that you notice that you're not getting nice full plump little leaflets on the plant, then increase the watering obviously. Let it run through a little bit longer so the soil can be a little bit more saturated. But the main thing is just that you really want it to dry out fairly quickly. Never water this plant when the top of the soil is still damp. I mean really like I'd say 50% of the soil you want to be dried out before watering it. If you're unsure about how to gauge something like that, a moisture meter comes in really handy and doesn't, why Why won't you focus? Because of focal length, I know what I'm doing here. There you go. So you can kind of see, let me come up here, reduce some reflection a little bit. Not gonna happen, not today. What's the problem? All right, you can kind of see there, even though it's overexpo overexposed, it's because I'm looking at the word moist there that even after watering, giving a slight soak, it's only in the middle of moist, which is fine. I don't think I would ever want that moisture meter to really read wet for this plant because they don't like to be wet. And I already talked a little bit about propagating with the leaflets like this with the tray. Also, I didn't moisten the soil. I just kind of did this for demonstration purposes. I don't really have any interest in propagating mine, but we'll talk about it a little bit. I can see on mine, particularly there are two different growths here. There's one here and another one back over here. There have been a lot of leaflets that have fallen out along that stem. Those are the growths that I know would be good to propagate. I don't really care about cutting those off because I think they kind of ugly now if they lost their leaves. I'm just gonna take a pair of scissors and just pop that right off. So propagating these guys through actual stem cuttings is going to be a much more fast way to do this. I like to make sure that there's at least about an inch and a half of stem on there. These little leaflets that came off can go over here into that tray, just like that. I'll put them in there. And then it's best to let these pieces sit for a while, a couple weeks, maybe even a month. Really just however long it takes for that cutting for this end piece here to sort of callus over. Don't want to see any more green in there. It should kind of get sort of a scabby, rough appearance to it. Which really, I mean, that shouldn't take a month, but if that's how long it takes, that's how long it takes. You just want to make sure it's dry. You can also use a desiccant powder, something like some cinnamon. You can dab some cinnamon on there. That'll help dry that out a little bit more quickly. Also helps kind of keep things a little bit more clean. Sanitary, it helps keep things from getting into that cutting if you're worried about that. And if you'd like, while drying it, you can just plop it on top of some soil. And what will happen is over time, this whole thing will start to put out little bitty roots along here and then it'll take off growing and you can like cut those into sections and have multiple plants or what i think looks a little bit more nice is to put it into a pot that has some really well draining cactus soil mix like we talked about before something that has very sharp drainage moisten that soil just a little bit poke a hole in the soil and just pop it in there we're pretending that this is a pot. Does that, I probably did, should have clarified that before. And of course, add some rooting hormone or really dip the cutting in the rooting hormone first. That will help speed things up quite a bit. And then I just leave them, just leave it alone. Let it do its thing. Once I start to notice new growth, once I've done this, that's when I'll start fertilizing, but I typically don't mess with that until I actually start to see the growth on the plant other than like the rooting hormone or maybe adding in a little teeny tiny bit of some sort of starter fertilizer in the beginning. That can work also. Oh, forgot to cut this one off. There we go. Also, when you cut these off, that can encourage more of a bushy habit. It can encourage them to sort of branch out. There's a piece over here. You can see where it started to branch out. I actually think that these look a lot better. Pardon the shakiness. Let me stabilize the tripod. I personally prefer when they just have single growth, just nothing branching out, and eventually the weight will pull them down. They'll cascade very, they'll cascade. They will cascade very tightly down the edge of whatever they're planted on. If they're outdoors against some type of wall over, I mean, just a tall pot hanging basket, I think that looks a little bit more nice. But once it gets really full, you don't really notice the branching anyway, so it's not a big deal. But like I said, I do kind of like this seemingly monopodial growth here. And these do flower. The flowers are kind of cute. They range from sort of a reddish pink color to white, or really, I mean, it's not really a range. It's pretty much you get white flowers or reddish pink flowers. That just depends on the variety. I mean, they're cute, but I mean, I grow this and I think most people do for the texture, for the color. It just looks really cool. It's a neat looking plant. It's a little bit weird to talk about a plant being one that just doesn't like to be watered and then calling it difficult to grow. But I think it's just as far as succulents go, you know, most succulents don't like a ton of water. 
but this one just really seems to be much more prone to rotting than others do. Like the Senecio Rolianius, the String of Pearls, they rot very easily also if they're overwatered. It's going to be kind of like that. It helps a lot to just kind of get to know your plants, get to see uh, how they respond to your actions, basically to watering, what happens after you water it. When you water it, do you start to see yellowing along the foliage on the inside? That means it's got too much water, the soil's not draining well enough, maybe temperatures are a little bit too cool. These don't like piping like crazy hot temperatures, but as long as they're not in really intense direct sunlight, they can take the heat. It's just they prefer things like not over like 95. I really, the sweet spot I've noticed with these guys seems to be between like 65 and like 82 somewhere in there. And one of the things that's great about that is those are pretty much in the range of household temperatures. Now, 82 indoors, I would not be very happy with that, but I know plenty of people who are. I've just, I've gotten spoiled by the air conditioning. And I think like the average household temperature is something like 68 to 74, somewhere in there. And it'll do well with that. One thing I'm not particularly crazy about with this plant is how delicate it is. I'm pretty shocked that this actually hasn't dropped any leaflets while I've been filming. The ones that are in the dish that I did earlier, I plucked those off of a branch that wasn't looking too happy. But normally, when I mess with these plants, like just moving them just a little bit, they drop leaflets all over the place. Perhaps because it's kind of dried out and kind of desiccated, the leaves are holding on a little bit more tightly. They aren't as heavy, really. So it's not that they have a stronger hold on to the plant, they're just less heavy because the poor thing needed a really heavy drink. As they grow, those stems go up and up and up, and eventually the weight of them makes them come down and they'll start to cascade. Doors, if you are putting in the garden, having it over a wall or something where it can grow, and kind of cascade looks great they will root out and put out roots along their stems i think there are even some on here because the plant was so thirsty it started to grow roots along the stems okay well i think the roots were actually on the pieces that i cut off to propagate you can see there's a little bit of root hanging down on here that will if this was cascading across the soil surface those will put down and they'll creep and crawl but the more contact a succulent has with soil the higher risk you have of rotting which is why i really prefer them as a trailer and not a crawler if you do notice that your burrow's tail has lots of those little roots starting to come out along the stems like i showed before and the leaves are sort of shriveled that's usually an indication that they would appreciate more water. They're seeking out moisture. The humidity in the air is the reason that those roots are coming out and they're going, okay, I need water so bad that I'm gonna start trying to take it from the air. Other succulents will do that to like echeverias. They'll put out really fine white roots. They'll sort of stretch out if things are way too dry, but they're in a humid environment. That didn't make sense, did it? If the soil's really dry and they're not being watered often enough, but the air around them is humid, then they'll start to kind of stretch and put out those roots. Which is really cool. I love when plants have neat little survival tactics like that. All right, there it is, Burrow's Tale. What do you guys have to add? Tips, tricks, observations. Maybe you just think it's pretty, or maybe you just want to say hi. Comment down below, because I love talking to everybody and hearing from everybody. I have all my social media linked down below. Follow me and I'll follow you back. I use Instagram far more than anything. It's a good way to talk on there. I really do enjoy seeing everybody's pictures and chat with everybody. It's a lot of fun getting to nerd out with my plant friends. Not a single leaf popped off. That's very unusual. And I really do think that's because it was thirsty and those leaflets maybe just aren't heavy enough. Or maybe it's like, I can't spare to lose anything, so it's holding on. I'm not sure. Hey, and don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. It helps a ton, makes a big difference for the videos in the channel. I really do appreciate it, so thank you. And subscribe as well, because I upload multiple times a week. Set that notification bell, that way you know when all the new videos come out. I do have some other plans for this plant once I move it outside, which will be in probably like three weeks to a month, probably around, I'd say the second to third week of May, when there's no risk of frost left at all. Nighttime temperatures are above 50 consistently. I might be putting this into a taller container to let it droop down instead of having it on the hanger. The hanger really just kind of worked out better for my situation in the winter time because I can put it up here on my C stand, which is sort of hard to see. That's for backdrops. Instead, I just use it for plants, which is working just fine. So and that's why it's on this like kind of wonky mismatch hanger thing there. All right. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. Everything about life, all those fun things. Everything's just fantastic. All good things as always. And most importantly, everybody keep on growing. Bye bye.